Today we will be doing technical analysis on the S&P 500 for the week ending Friday, October 23rd, 2020. And for this analysis, we will be using StockCharts.com. That is the charting service that I use and pay for. And I will leave a link to their site in the description box below this video. My name is Rodney Constable. I am a former financial advisor, a former vice president of a major mutual fund company, and I am the president and founder of Simple Market Signals at SimpleMarketSignals.com. Simple Market Signals is like having risk radar for the U.S. stock market. This week, we were down 53 basis points, so just a little over one half of 1% on the S&P 500, and we closed at 3465.39. The first chart that we're going to look at is a four-month weekly candlestick chart of the S&P 500. So each candlestick does represent one week of trading. And the blue line is set at 3,500. What we can see is for basically the last nine weeks, we've been stalling around this 3,500 level. The only candle that we've had in the history of the S&P 500 that is closed above 3,500 on a weekly basis is this one here for the week ending August 28th. And of course, that candle closed at 3508.01. So that is the only time that we've ever closed on a weekly basis above 3500 on the S&P 500. And you can see that we got right up to this and stall this week. Again, we didn't lose a ton for the week, but you can see this stalling action. You can see that 3500, that area, that 3500 to about 3510 area on the S&P 500 is acting as overhead resistance. If we're going to continue to move higher going forward, we're going to need to see the market start to close on a weekly basis above that 3500, 3510 area going forward. But for now, we are trapped underneath about 3,500, with 3,500 acting as overhead resistance. The next chart that we're going to look at here is a one-month, one-hour candlestick chart of the S&P 500. So each candlestick represents one hour of trading. The blue horizontal lines are set at 3420. 3330 and 3210. So if the 3420 area is broken to the downside, the next level of support would be 3330 and then 3210. And this blue line here is the downtrend that we've been in since we peaked recently on October 12th. And you can see that up until the last hour of trading, here on Friday the 23rd, we had been trapped underneath that downtrend line. However, the very last hour of trading, that candle closed above this downtrend line. So could that mean that we are breaking the downtrend and we're going to see some positive action out of the markets next week? Too early to tell, but this is a good sign. So what we will want to see next week is continued upside movement from here in order to validate the fact that this downtrend has now been broken. So the fact that we bounced off of this 3420 level a couple of times this week and that that 3420 level held and the fact that the last hour of trading this week closed above this downtrend line, at least for now, those are very positive signs. But we will want to see follow through next week in the form of more upside action in the markets. And it wasn't just the S&P 500 that sold off this week. The NASDAQ 100, the triple Qs, were down 1.27% for the week. This is a seven-year weekly chart of the triple Qs. And the green line is the 40-week moving average. Of course, that is equivalent to the 200-day moving average. And you can see here that we are still, even though we sold off in the last couple of weeks here on the triple Qs, we are, we are still trading about 18% above the long-term moving average. Now, you know, it doesn't mean that we have to pull back anytime soon to the long-term moving average. However, you can see that looking over the last seven years, you can see that, you know, anytime you get a big gap, you eventually pull back to at least the 40-week moving average, if not fall below it. And you can see that time and time again, that is what happens. So the fact that we are still trading, even after a couple of weeks of selling, not huge selling, but, you know, even after a couple of weeks of selling and this stalling action that we've seen over the last couple of months in the overall market, including the triple Qs, even after this, we are still trading 
about 18% above the long-term moving average. So it does make us vulnerable to a pullback at some point in the not-too-distant future. It may or may not happen. A lot of that could depend on stimulus and other things like that. But just be aware that we are still trading well above the long-term moving average on the triple Qs. And it wasn't just equities that sold off this week. What we're looking at here is the performance of two treasury ETFs. The IEF, which covers the 7 to 10 year maturity treasuries, and the TLT, which covers the 20 year plus treasury maturities. And we can see for the last week, the IEF was down 72 basis points, and the TLT fell 2.10%. So what we're looking at here, guys, what you need to understand is you've got stocks and bonds selling off at the same time. And I think this is a glimpse into the future, at least potentially. We've got bond yields so low these days, even with this sell-off, the 10-year Treasury is still well below 1%, okay? Um, and so that's about half the rate of inflation, uh, depending on how you want to look at the rate of inflation. The point is that Guys, bonds are really expensive, and you know anybody that has a 60-40, 70-30, 50-50 portfolio where you have you know 60% of your portfolio in equities and 40% in high-quality bonds, like you know either the seven to ten-year or twenty-year Treasury ETF, and you're expecting those bonds to help offset equity risk, uh, guys, it's it's not going to work very well anymore. Okay, and this again is just another reason why I am so passionate about what I do with Simple Market Signals because it is a way for you to get your head wrapped around the risk levels in the stock market and potentially allowing you then to adjust your equity exposure up and down to match the risk levels in the market, okay? So whether you're a financial advisor, I have a lot of financial advisors that are subscribers to Simple Market Signals or an individual investor that runs at least some of your own money, please take a serious look at Simple Market Signals, guys, because it will help you. Because in a world where you're seeing stocks and bonds selling off together, high-quality bonds and stocks selling off together, um, guys, it, it's going to be really, really hard to manage risk in your portfolio in this type of an environment. And I think there is the potential for further selling in high quality bonds as we're seeing here. And as a matter of fact, look at over the last month, I'm going to change this to last month. You can see over the last month, the TLT is down 3.85% and the seven to 10 year treasury is down 1.20%. Okay. So think about that for a second. You've got less than a 1% yield on the IEF, the seven to 10 year maturity, and you've lost 1.20% in capital appreciation. So even factoring back in the yield, you are now at a negative return on that bond ETF, okay? Now, bonds may not be as volatile as stocks. I understand that, okay? But just understand that it's going to be really hard to make money in bonds going forward. It's going to be really hard to expect high-quality bonds to offset equity risk in this new normal that we find ourselves in. So, we're presented as investors uh, and traders. We're presented with a very challenging environment. I think it's going to be like this for a long time. It's going to be very tough, whether it's your 401k, your 403b, your IRA, or whatever. It's going to be very, very difficult to manage risk in your portfolio now because these yields on these bonds are so low. It's not your fault, of course, but it's what you're it's the hand that you're being dealt. So we will need to take a different approach going forward if we're going to win, if we're going to be very successful as investors. And uh, that is where, again, simple market signals can help because you will understand the risk levels. You'll understand the changes in the risk levels in the stock market. And that will allow you, at your discretion, to then adjust your equity exposure up and down to match the risk level in the stock market. So with that said, please take a serious look at Simple Market Signals. And remember, next week, we will want to keep our eye on the trading of the S&P 500 to see if we can continue to break out to the upside or if we roll over and trade beneath the 3420 area on the S&P 500. But at least for now, at the end of the week here, the fact that we had this 
last candle close above, and this is, of course, on the hourly charts, close above this downtrend line, and we successfully stayed on the hourly candles. We continued to close above this 3420 level, at least in the short term. Those are both positive signs that the market is holding in there and being incredibly resilient. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a stock market risk management system? Something that helps you understand the various risk levels in the stock market on an ongoing basis? Do you know when it's safest to be in equities? Do you know when it's most dangerous to be in equities? Do you know the direction of the short-term trend on an ongoing basis? Do you know the direction of the overall trend in the stock market? My system is called Simple Market Signals. Simple Market Signals is market-based. There's no opinions, forecasts, or guesswork in Simple Market Signals. It took me over 20 years to develop Simple Market Signals. I developed Simple Market Signals by reverse engineering the stock market. And I studied the stock market over numerous time frames, including in numerous bull and bear markets. And what I found is that certain conditions exist during these various market phases. And then based on that information, I created simple, easy to understand signals around these different phases of the market. And the thing is that most people don't know about or have access to the data necessary to do the research that I had to do to put together this model. Now let's take a look at the signals. The red signal has the highest equity risk associated with it, and the worst sell-offs, including bear markets, will happen when the signal is red. When the signal is yellow, this means that equity risk is moderate, and sideways to slightly up or down price action is very common during a yellow signal environment. The green signal is the best signal. It has the lowest equity risk associated with it, and most all upward progress in the stock market will be made in a green signal environment. Said another way, it is very hard to make money in equities unless the signal is green. Okay, a quick refresher on the Simple Market Signals weekly signals and how they can help you. The signals are green, yellow, and red. The green signal is the best risk-reward ratio for equity investors, and what you're going to find is that the stock market makes most of its upward progress when the signal is green, okay? The worst risk-reward ratio signal for equity investors is when the signal is red, and what you're going to find is that bear markets and the worst downturns in the stock market happen when the signal is red, like during the 07 through 09 bear market, as we see here. So again, the best risk-reward ratio signal for equity investors is when the signal is green, and the worst risk-reward signal for equity investors is when the signal is red. Now let's take a look at the first three months of 2020 so you can see how simple market signals could have helped you in the most recent downturn. We know that we came into the year with a strong stock market, so we had a green signal for the majority of January, but on January 27th, the signal went yellow for a couple of weeks. We went back to green in the first part of February, and I warned my newsletter subscribers on Saturday, the 22nd of February, that I felt like uh, the market it was starting to roll over and that uh, that we were that things were changing and so i gave people a heads up right here uh, over the weekend and i told them that if the market continued to sell off that we would probably see at least a yellow signal if not worse the following week and that's exactly what happened on the 24th the simple market signals risk signal went yellow now one of the other things that i want to point out here is in addition to the risk signal i also have several trend direction indicators in this simple market signals model. Now, the longer term one is called the general trend indicator, and the general trend indicator went negative on the 25th. So on the 24th, the signal went yellow. The general trend indicator went negative on the 25th, and then two days later, the signal went red. The risk signal went red. So think about this. All in one week, just a few days apart, we had a yellow signal, we had the general trend indicator went negative, 
and then we had the risk signal went red on the 27th. That was Thursday, all right? And by the way, this general trend indicator is a positive negative signal, and it operates totally independently of the risk signals. It's just trend. So the general trend indicator gives you still another way to monitor and control risk in your portfolio. And guys, that general trend indicator had been positive since October and then went negative. So right there, just those two signals alone told us that something was changing in the stock market. And then by the 27th, the signal had went red, and we can see here that the market fell from there. As part of the Simple Market Signals model, there are three powerful indicators. There's the Simple Market Signals proprietary risk level signal. There's the short-term trend indicator, which helps clarify short-term moves in the overall U.S. stock market. And a normal signal length for the short-term trend indicator is anywhere from one or two days to seven plus weeks. Then there's the general trend indicator which is designed to stay positive during the bulk of most uptrends and negative during the bulk of most downtrends. And a normal signal length for the general trend indicator is anywhere from two weeks to five plus months. We disseminate the information through the Simple Market Signals weekly newsletter. In the weekly newsletter, you will receive the proprietary risk level signal on the overall U.S. stock market you will also receive the proprietary risk level signal on all 11 major sectors of the S&P 500. You will also receive the short-term trend indicator signal. You will also receive the general trend indicator signal. You will also receive market and sector performance information over multiple time frames. You will receive a recap of what happened in the stock market for the past week. You'll also receive technical analysis information, fundamental analysis information, and yield curve information. There is a ton of information every week in the Simple Market Signals newsletter. And a subscription to Simple Market Signals is just $19.95 per month. That's less than $0.67 cents per day. It's billed monthly on your credit card. There are no contracts. You can cancel any time. And your first two weeks are free. And, guys, I want to set realistic expectations here, okay? The newsletter isn't fancy. It's effective. It's plain text, no color, no fluff. And please note that due to international compliance regulations, you must be at least 18 years old and a citizen of the United States of America who is currently living in the U.S. in order to subscribe to Simple Market Signals. And again, that is just due to international compliance regulations. Now let's recap what you will get with your Simple Market Signals subscription. You will get the weekly emailed newsletter with all of the contents we just talked about, you will also receive special midweek updates when warranted. So if there's a major signal or direction change in the middle of the week, we're not going to wait until the weekend to get you that information. We're going to get that information to you as soon as possible via a special midweek update email. The best fit for a Simple Market Signal subscriber is an investor or trader with at least a six to eight week plus time frame that they're focusing on. If you're a day trader or a really short-term trader, Simple Market Signals may help you a little bit, but the reality is Simple Market Signals is designed for those investors and traders with at least a six to eight week plus time frame that they're focusing on. And if you would like even more information about how you can benefit from Simple Market Signals, I have the following videos that will be linked in the description box below this video. And to subscribe to Simple Market Signals, you just need to go to the website that you see on the screen here. That's https colon two forward slashes simplemarketsignals.com. It'll take you about four minutes to subscribe. It's that easy. Once you reach the website, the first thing you will need to do is accept the cookies. Please notice that due to international compliance regulations, you must be at least 18 years old and a citizen of the United States of America who is currently living in the U.S. in order to use this website or our services. And that is just due to international compliance regulations. All right, so to get started, all you have to do is click this green button, and that will take you to the product page. And this explains, of course, uh, what you get with your subscription. And then just make sure that that says one, because if there's more than one in there, if you have a two or a three, you'll get multiple subscriptions to the service and you only need one. 
click the sign up now button and that will take you to the checkout page once you're on the checkout page fill in the necessary information anything that is required including the email address keep in mind that this is an email newsletter so we will have to have your best email address on file and make sure this box is checked because that's how your email address gets into the system so if that is unchecked your email won't get transferred into the simple market signals system and you won't get your newsletters so please make sure that box is checked and then of course uh, just double check make sure that your monthly total is going to be 1995 a month Remember that your first two weeks are free, so your first renewal date will be two weeks after your subscription date. Fill in your credit card information. You will need to accept the privacy policy and check that box that uh, says you've read and agreed to the terms and conditions. Click the sign up now button, and it's that easy, guys. It's probably going to take you maybe four or five minutes total to fill in everything and subscribe to Simple Market Signals. Now, when you subscribe, Okay, understand that everything is tied to your email on file. All right, so once you subscribe, you go out to the website, simplemarketsignals.com, and it'll take you maybe five minutes to subscribe. It's pretty easy, and you just follow the prompts, and then your, you know, your email on file is then going to drive everything going forward. This is an emailed newsletter subscription. That's how we disseminate the information, and you're, you should get an immediate emailed confirmation of your subscription. You will also receive an automatic welcome letter that is automatically generated once you subscribe so if you don't get that welcome letter beyond your confirmation okay of the subscription if you don't get that welcome letter if you don't see it in your in basket then go check your spam your junk or your promotion folders especially in Gmail having a lot of people that are having the uh, newsletters and everything coming from simple market signals going into the promotion folder so please make sure that you check your spam your junk and your promotion folders and also understand that the newsletters go out on the weekend. All right. So the goal is to get it out Saturdays by 2 p.m. But it could be any time over the weekend, depending on, on uh, you know, how long it's taken me to do the uh, research necessary for that week's newsletter. But I try to get it out by 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Saturday if I can. Uh, again, earlier if I can make that happen. And then the next edition. Right. Once you subscribe, understand that the next edition, right? So if you just subscribe on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, the next regular edition is going to be set out on Saturday. All right. And then once you subscribe, we will send you as soon as we can the latest edition, but we have to send that out manually. So just be patient with us. But again, within a, a day or two of your subscription, if you don't get this latest edition, then go back and check your spam junk and promotion folders. Uh, because it's probably hidden in there, all right? So you should get the automatic welcome letter and then the latest edition within, an ex within the next day or two of your subscription. And then again, the standard newsletter goes out every weekend, but we try to make it no later than 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on any Saturday.